you're born with HLA types that like to present antigens all weird. And then there's some kind of trigger that sets off an autoimmune reaction. This is exactly what happens in systemic lupus erythematosus, a chronic multi-system autoimmune disease that can affect virtually every organ in the body. Lupus is Latin for wolf, by the way. And you should always be on the lookout for the lupus wolf in the sketchy universe. Because whenever we bring up the concept of lupus or a lupus-like reaction, the lupus wolf will be there. Stalking the night. Or in the case of teen wolf over here. Just trying to get through another day of high school. Lupus is actually a pretty common condition. Around 1 in 500 people have it. It occurs much more often in women than it does men. With the gender ratio being about 10 to 1 in adults. Also, black people and people of Asian descent are affected at a greater rate than Caucasians. While the age at onset of lupus can vary greatly, from teenagers all the way to the elderly in their 60s, the most common presentation of lupus is a young woman, usually in her 20s or 30s. Hence why this sketch stars a young female teen wolf. I guess 20s or 30s is a bit old for high school. Uh, they have night classes, I guess. As you probably have guessed, the etiology of lupus is multifactorial, involving a number of the mechanisms of autoimmune diseases that we discussed earlier. Let's go through a few of the factors specific to our leading lupine lady. That backstory, I gotta see. As with nearly every other autoimmune disease, genetic predisposition plays an important role in the development of systemic lupus erythematosus. The most common genetic predisposition is found at the major histocompatibility, or MHC, locus, class 2 MHC molecules, especially HLA-DR and HLA-DQ alleles, are associated with a higher risk of developing systemic lupus erythematosus. Also, as I mentioned previously, environmental factors likely contribute. For example, a virus such as EBV may induce the formation of autoantibodies, like those classic anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies seen in most patients with lupus. This might involve that whole molecular mimicry thing we talked about. One mechanism that we didn't mention earlier but that may play a role in lupus particularly, is the effect of hormones, especially estrogen, symbolized by the female symbol on the girl's bathroom next to Dr. Q's office. Estrogens tend to stimulate the cell-mediated immune system, inducing proliferation of T-cells and B-cells and the release of certain cytokines, as well as inhibiting apoptosis of self-reactive T-cells and B-cells. Consequently, women are more predisposed to make autoantibodies that eventually lead to clinically apparent lupus. By comparison, Androgens tend to be more immunosuppressive. This may help explain the outsized difference in gender representation when it comes to lupus. 